Today I'm going to show you how to turn any old Mac you have, like the one I have here, which is the 2012 Mac Mini, into a home server build. Welcome back to the Decoded YouTube channel. My name's Dylan and I'm here to decode tech one video at a time. So I originally wrote up this whole script for this video and was about to film it and was testing some things and making sure things would work how I wanted them to. I figured out that the software I was going to base this whole video around isn't even maintained anymore and to put it lightly sucks and that service or software is Mac OS server and then I came to find out that there's a lot of pre-built native features on Macs that can allow a server type environment so rather than recommend somebody spend $20 on Mac OS server and once again it's a useless piece of software we can do this for free. Since building my decoded hack Mac, I have not used my 2012 Mac mini at all. And rather than being utilized, it's been used as a paperweight collecting dust on a desk that it now resides doing nothing. Which to be honest is a real shame because the 2012 Mac mini is still a great machine. And instead of letting it just collect dust and do nothing at all, no, instead, we're gonna do something with it, and you can do this with any old Mac that you have. What exactly is it we are going to do with our old Macs? Well, my friend, we are gonna turn them into personal home servers, and instead of just letting them go to waste, we'll put them to use. Home servers are great to have, especially if you're a person like me that has a bunch of footage that you don't wanna bog down and take up a bunch of space on your main rig, and instead utilize a centralized storage point over the network to store all of these archived files and be able to grab them at any time you may need them. Without further ado, let's jump on over to the computer and get started with the tutorial. Let's get started. Oh yes, I am in a change of clothes. That is because I had to refilm this whole portion of the video. It's a long story, but there's a couple of things I wanna start with and mention before we get into the overall tutorial. And that is for my OS system on my Mac mini, I am currently running the latest version of Catalina. That is something I wanted to mention. If you're using an older OS, you may have some different functions and services that you can enable, and you may not have the services that you, I can enable within Catalina. Another thing that is important to mention is I'm going to be using an ethernet connection rather than a Wi-Fi connection because it is much more stable and it's really recommended to use an ethernet connection, especially in a server-based environment. It's gonna increase performance and cut down on time when transferring files over the network. If you have an older Mac and don't have a gigabit ethernet connection, you can purchase something like the Firewire ethernet gigabit connector through Apple or Amazon. So that's something you can use and increase the performance and decrease the amount of time if you have say a 10 by 100 ethernet card in the Mac you are using. On the Mac you're gonna be turning into a server, go ahead and go to your system preferences by going up to the Apple icon at the top left of your screen and going into system preferences. Once you're inside system preferences, go to the network settings. Once you're in the network settings, go and choose ethernet. If you're using Wi-Fi, then choose Wi-Fi. But I'm gonna be using ethernet for this and then come over to where it says configure IPv4. We're changing this now. We're going to set it to a static IP. What this is doing is whenever the router assigns a new IP address, say on a reboot or whatever it may be, it's going to have a new IP address. And we wanna set a static IP address to always have a referencing point to know where this server is. And to do that, come to the drop down menu and choose this option right here. And then we have to set the IP address. Now I know that this IP address right here isn't being used by any other devices on the network. So I'm just going to copy, oh, can't do that. I guess I have to type it in. So we're gonna type that in here. So I, I recommend you doing this as well because you know that this is not being used by any other devices on your network. And once you're done with that, Go ahead and click on apply to see all the ip addresses that are currently on your network what we can do is run a command in terminal go ahead and open up a terminal window and type out the word ping and then the first four numbers in your ip address so i'm going to do 192.168.0 and then i'm going to do another point and i'm just going to type 255 and what this will do is call to all the ip addresses on the network let it run for a second and then hit Control c this will show us every device and their IP address on our network currently. So I know that I cannot use 162 as an ending, 109 as an ending, 193, which is the Mac server, 
and that's about it so i have three devices currently on my network and if you would like to you can use a range of zero to 250. what we're going to do now is enable some services on our mac to make it a server head back to the system preferences menu now and go down to sharing and click on that this is where we're going to enable some services that are going to create the whole server build. The first one that we're going to talk about is file sharing. Mine's going to look totally different than yours because I'm currently using it as a server. But let's talk about file sharing. Check that one on and then within file sharing, come over to the options menu. With this drop down menu that appears, we see a ton of different things. The first thing that we see is share files and folders using SMB. This protocol is used by Windows computers. And if you would like to share files from a window computer, you have to check this one on. And then additionally, right down here where it says Windows file sharing, you have to add the account, the Windows account and its password and store it on your server. That's how you can fully enable SMB protocol. The next one is share files and folders using AFP, which is Apple file protocol. And that's used for, well, you guessed it, Mac devices, iOS devices, and whatever else that Apple has. That is the protocol for Apple you'd like to, and I'm assuming you would like to, check that one on as well, and then click done. To add a new shared folder to the network, we can come to the plus button right here, click on that, and it's gonna bring up a new window. Within this window, you can select a previously created folder, or you can add a new folder that you would like to share over the network. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna click on desktop. That's where I'm going to have this folder stored, this new folder, Then I'm gonna click new folder, and I'm just gonna write test. Create. We can see that it has added it to my desktop. Click add. And now it has pre filled the user section, and we'll get into that a bit more. But before we do that, we're going to go and right click on the new folder that we created, and we're going to come down to advanced options. With this drop down menu, we see that we have an allow guest users option pre enabled. I'm going to actually deselect this because that would allow guest users that are currently connected to the network to see this shared folder. Another thing we see is only allow SMB encrypted connections. That's if you would like that enabled, you can enable that. And then this one right here is the real gem. Share as a time machine backup destination. Go ahead and check that one on. What the time machine backup location enable does is it allows a centralized location to be stored on the server for that shared folder to be used for time machine backups. The nice thing about this is it allows you to store all of your time machine backups on a centralized point over the network and then cut down on the need for external drive for each individual Mac that you have. Instead, you could just use one external drive to use with the server and back up to that external drive. Pretty cool, right? One more thing we can enable once we have enabled share as a time machine backup destination is limit backups to a set amount of gigabytes. If you would like to do that, what it will do is exactly how it sounds. It will limit the space that time machine backups can take on this shared folder. So if you would like to, you can check that on. But once we're done in here, let's click OK and let's talk about the user section now. So the first thing that it does is pre-fills the user section. And those are the users that can see and either read and write read only or write only. If you would like to get rid of some of these pre-filled users, what you can do is click on the user that you wanna get rid of, use the minus button right here, click on that, and it will say, are you sure you wanna do this? Click okay, and then it gets rid of that user. To add a user, use the plus button and then choose a contact that is either stored locally on your Mac device or in your iOS device, like your phone. I'm just gonna select someone random, select, enter in a password for them and then enter in the password for the Mac that you are adding this user to this shared folder on. And what it has done is now added that user to this shared folder and the permission that it has set for them is read only. If I wanted to change that, I would just go in here and choose read and write. And now he has privileges to both read what's inside the folder as well as store data and files to this shared folder. To have a remote access to this server, regardless of where it is in the household, making sure that we have an internet connection at that point we store it, we have to set on or check on remote management. Within remote management, come to where it says computer settings and click on that. And then it shows a show remote management status in the menu bar. If you want that enabled, go ahead and enable that. Anyone may request permission to control the screen. That means anyone can request the access and controlling of this server. And then VNC viewers may control screen with the password. Check this one on and set a password right here for them. 
and then ignore anything under here it really isn't that important if you would like to go ahead and just look into that and then click okay and then the next thing we have to do is allow access for it and set either all users or only these users so you can just set an amount of users that you would like or you can use all users and just like how we added the contact or from our contacts the users that can see and read and write to that folder that we created just use the plus button add them now an additional thing we can do is click on the options button right here and then for this additional user that we have added to have remote access and control the computer or the mac we can set a bunch of different other variables that they have access to within this mac server once you have gone through all of these just click ok the last step we're going to take now is connecting to the server and mounting one of its drives to another mac how we can do that is coming up to the menu bar right up here go to go connect to server choose the server you want to connect to you don't see anything then type in the ip address that we set that static ip address go to connect it may ask you and prompt you to enter in your credentials to access that mac server so go ahead and do that and what i'm going to do now is choose one of these drives which i've already mounted them but for you choose one of the drives or the shared folders that you would like to mount to the mac that you are using that is not the server and then just click ok and what it will do is mount that drive to the mac you are on and connecting to the server now there are a ton of different services that we skipped over in today's video that are really cool and i do recommend you checking out on your new server build i wanted to give a general overview on the basic services that i thought were the most important to the general use case like you guys. But if you guys have any questions or comments or maybe you wanna see a video on those different services and what they do, make sure to comment down in the comment section below or check out the Decoded Discord. It's growing by the day. Make sure to check it out with the link to that Discord down below the video. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the video today and I appreciate you stopping in and if you got this far, well, thanks, you watched the whole video. Make sure to leave it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or you can leave it a thumbs down because that is an option for you as well. But until the next time, and as always guys, happy decoding.